Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about these four topics in Blender. Creases, bevel weights, mark sharps, and seams. Let's start with the creases. So what a crease does, in theory, is it removes any edge that has been marked as a crease from the calculations of a subdivision surface modifier. So it basically is useful in subsurface workflows. So to add a crease, first you select all the edges you want creased. Here I've selected the outermost, uh, outermost loop. And you click Control E, and you select Edge Crease in this Edge Options tab here. Or you just uh, click Shift E for the hotkey, which is what I'm going to do. So you click Shift E, then you drag it out, and you can see the corners right here getting dragged like that. So they fill up that like edge. You can also change the factor here. So the the lower the factor, the less so the lower the factor, the more the subdivision surface modifier actually affects your edges. All right, you can also add it like anywhere pretty much. Let's add one here, Shift E, and then you can see it gets dragged towards that edge. Yep. All right, you can think of this as kind of like a frame. Like your mesh uh, with subdivision surface, you can imagine it's like a piece of cloth and you're stapling it to like a wooden frame. And the wooden frame, the shape of the wooden frame, it goes like this here, and like with this crease as well. And you're just draping the cloth over this wooden frame. And then that's kind of like how it would droop. All right, next up, bevel weights. So bevel weights are used when working with the bevel modifier. Let's add one here, make it bigger, add more segments. All right. Now you can see the bevel modifier here is affecting any edge that is at an angle uh, of over 30 degrees. So like all of these, this one as well. And we don't want that. We want all of these faces up here to be beveled and all of the edges in between them, or you can actually, you can just select this entire uh, loop here. So let's say we only want this to be beveled. In that case, what we would do is click Control E and select Edge Bevel Weight. Then we drag it out till it turns blue, or we also just click one on our keyboard. And now it didn't do anything. And that's because you actually need to set the limit method from angle to weight. And now you can see this is still beveled, but everything else is excluded from the bevel modifier. This is very useful if you want to work with like a um, non-destructive workflow because bevel the bevel modifier is non-destructive. Normal bevels like uh, Control B is like this is destructive. You can't like edit it anymore. So this is very useful if you want to have a non-destructive workflow. You can also like actually modify how much the bevel modifier affects these edges. Let's add another edge bevel weight, and you can see if I drag it out more, then it gets affected more. If I only drag it out like half, you can see, you can also modify it here, as long as you don't click out of it, you can modify how large this bevel is. All right, that's about it for bevel weights. Let's move on to mark sharps. So mark sharps, uh, mar uh, edges that are marked sharp will appear uh, when they are shaded smooth and also when you turn on auto smooth. So auto smooth also kind of does the same thing as mark sharps. Like right here, you can see these two faces. The angle between them is larger than 30 degrees, which is why auto smooth is making this edge sharp. This one right here. And with mark sharps, you basically do the same thing, just manually. So let's actually turn this up to 180 degrees. So auto smooth is not affecting any edges, but it's still on. This is important. You have to have auto smooth on for mark sharps to actually appear. So let's mark this entire boolean out, uh, boolean out like um, kind of like indent. Let's mark this entire indent and 
select all of these with control. All right, connect it up here. And now we put control E and mark sharp. As you can see, it's marked sharp as if auto smooth was on. You can actually also do it, for example, uh, let's do it uh, right here, uh, like here and here. You can do it anywhere. Mark these sharp and they're visible while everything else is smooth. You can, this, you can also do it like right here, control E, mark sharp, and that is also sharp. That's it for mark sharp. Let's move on to seams. So seams are used when you are texturing. Right when you want to un UV unwrap a certain mesh. So what a seam does is, let's say we add a seam right here by mark seam. And this edge, so like this face, no, 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 this, how do I explain this now? So this face right here will never be connected to this face ever. If we UV unwrap this, let's UV unwrap it. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but actually let's select this entire edge here. Mark it as a seam and UV unwrap. So you can see this face right here is this, and it isn't connected to anything else, right? Because all of the edges that are connected to the mesh here are marked as a seam, so it won't be connected to the mesh at all. Let's do the same thing down here. Control E, mark seam, UV unwrap, and you can see the body is still not perfect because what we actually need to do is add another seam here so we can actually like cut this mesh apart. Because right now what's happening is Blender is trying to lay this out flat. So lay out this entire section here, right? It's trying to lay it out flat, but it can't because there is no supporting seam here that lets it cut the mesh and actually lay it out flat. So what it's doing is it's stretching it out. What it's doing is like, it's using this top part here, like stretching it together into the middle, and then the bottom part, it's stretching it out to get it as flat as possible. We don't want that. That distorts your textures. So what we're going to do is just add a seam here, which let's us cut the mesh, like let's blender cut the mesh pretty much when it's UV unwrapping, and it will unravel like this and like this. So let's UV unwrap, and as you can see, it did exactly that. But let's try removing this seam right here. Let's clear this single seam here, and UV unwrap. So you can see here, this circle is um, detached from the body, and this one as well, they're not connected. But let's UV unwrap. And since I just removed this seam, you can actually see, uh, I believe it's this. Yeah, this circle is actually connected to this face here. So let's select these two vertices. And you can see if we move them around, you can actually see they're connected. Unlike these ones, which are disconnected. Uh, kind of looks like a penis. <laughs> All right, let's also select this and clear the seam, you can wrap again, uh, it's now sideways penis, and now this is connected, you can see, and this as well. Alright, that's pretty much how seams work, they just cut a virtual hole in your mesh that lets the that lets Blender unwrap it. All right. That's about it for today's video. I hope it was helpful. Hope it was mildly entertaining and see you next time.